People have fallen for it. It's in every single documentary, practically, that you watch today. Evolution is a causality. Random mutation and natural selection caused everything. Sorry, there's no scientific evidence to support that. So it's not science, because we don't know. We can't see. We haven't objectively observed any of that manifesting. We haven't seen biosimplicity randomly evolving into biocomplexity. We haven't seen it. 150 years of attempts, and we're still stuck where we started. Now, I'm going to show you how many different, one way in which Stephen Hawking lies to us, either consciously or unconsciously. He says that if everything started with the Big Bang, and Darwinian absolutism, or Darwinian determinism, which is an oxymoron, Hare Krishna, that means that it's, to him, it's the same as a roulette wheel. There's a problem with that thinking. <laughs> now, here's why. He says in the beginning of his book that gravity holds the Earth as a sphere around the Sun. He doesn't explain why gravity doesn't pull it into the Sun, neither did Newton. There's two different kinds of gravity. There's a, a, a kind of gravity that, that pulls and a kind of gravity that, that, that repels, right? Every magnet tells us that. And magnets are the basis of dynamos, and dynamos are the basics, basics of all of our forms of energy retention and, and manufacture. Magnets. So everything has an electromagnetic signature and a quality, but they didn't explain what repels. Einstein calls that the cosmological constant, which is a big blanket statement to address a lot of weirdnesses in the universe. But it doesn't explain the causality. You see what we lost? It's just waffle. Because unless we address the causality, again, we're suffering the result of being lied to by clowns dressed up in professorial outfits to, conf to confuse us and give them the, the accolade of knowledge and science. But it isn't science. Now, watch this. In the book, <laughs> Baby Universes and Black Holes, Stephen Hawking says, we know the world is round. Why? Because I can buy a, 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 an airline ticket, and I can go from New York to California, from California to Japan, Japan to India, India to Turkey, Turkey to, to London, and London back to New York. I don't fall off the edge of the planet. <clears throat> I've never fallen off the edge of the planet, he said. Okay. Now, if there was a theoretical flat Earth scenario, which I call their philosophies and atheologies flat Earth, because they don't acknowledge soul as a causality, and in fact they're hostile to it. So, if if Stephen Hawking fell off the off the edge of the Earth in his, his little motorized go kart and his little little uh, Yankified black voice box and all of his contracts, that would be a, a definition for chaos. But he uses the roulette wheel to describe chaos. Why is that cheating? Here's an example. If you look at what a roulette wheel entails, there are seven fundamental, intrinsic, irreducible parts to a roulette wheel, all byproducts of intelligent intention and design. They are not random. Michael Behay, the author of Darwin's Black Box, which is a celebrated bestseller, ripping the guts out of Darwinian theory and showing it on the, on the consensual table of, of lucid science that it's not actually uh, not actually abiding by the by the scientific method because again we, we don't have any objective observational data to support any of it but in this case here's an example he uses a, the example of a mouse trap michael Behay. and in the mouse trap we have five different components that if you take one of those little elements out none of it works we know this word integrity Anyone want to describe integrity when we're turn to talking about design? Not in terms of human behavior, but in design? What does integrity mean? Some, something that has a connection with its ex external influences. Say that again, William? So, if, if you're talking about in the context of design, something yeah. that has a connection with its ex external influences. You, know. you could say, yes, good, well said. You can also say that if it is an irre irreducible relationship, <clears throat> the breaking of which deforms all, all, all the parts. In other words, if you remove that, then the entire design collapses. That's called integrity. When you, when you remove that relationship, none of those parts function anymore. So if you pull a carburetor out of an engine, what's going to happen? If you pull the block off an engine, if you pull the spark plugs out of an engine, what happens? None of it works. You might as well chuck out the engine if you haven't got spark plugs. Or start all over again, right? 
That's integrity. Now, watch how integrated the parts of a, of, a, of, a, of a roulette wheel are. The base is the first part. It's the, it's the supporting wheel beneath the structure, right? That's one part. Now, why is this... Again, again, I'm going to exp try to explain clearly why this is important. Where's my cursor? Oh, there it is. The second is the wheel with clearly dedicated concentricity. It's a combination of the wheel's precise circular form and design and the, quote, mater pronounced mater, or the context of it, the forms it maps out, and its ability to smoothly spin and spin and spin in its center. That is not easy to achieve. If you've ever uh, worked as a potter, my father, uh, as a sideline, was a potter in Florida, and he used to teach the subject, so I had lots of experience of being on a potter's wheel. And everybody who knows pottery knows that it's not that easy. And I I'd like to show you, for instance, I'm slightly a frisbee geek, and if you if you play with a frisbee, you can get it spinning to the point where it's, you're hardly doing anything, and the spinning is, is almost spinning itself. All you have to do is go like that every few minutes or every few moments, and then the spin takes up. And it's interesting how, how many different ways spin gets put into the system, but we ignore how it, it's a causality. For instance. Let's continue with this, and I'll come back to the idea of spin. Not just in terms of propaganda, but how many different ways they're talking about zero-point energy, right? And they talk about singularities being infinite this, infinite that, causing the universe, but also zero time. All this use of the term zero is a lie. A zero is a lie. Why is that? Because zeros don't have anything to do with what we see as the cause of all causes. Krishna has no resemblance to a zero. And yet they get away with using these terms all the time. Zero point energy? When you look at a wave pattern in, an, in a bolt, when you look at a dynamo, it's creating voltage. And it's creating amperage. And a volt is what? A measurement of the troughs and the peaks of an electromagnetic charge. And the distance between the peak and the trough is the amount of, of voltage and the velocity is the amperage now to go from a create a movement where a volt goes up and down you have to start with something it won't just happen because you have wish for it you have to put some energy into the system and Plato said everything starts with movement we would say no everything starts with intention why watch this number three the spokes of differentiation as a set of fixed numerical variables the 12 hours in the day, 60 minutes, the 12 zodiacal houses, the 12 ages, the possibility of exponential gain, the yugas, etc. There are so many different ways we can examine these spokes of differentiation, making time interesting. That's why we have calendars. We call that the relationship between stereographic projection, which is how we create a zodiac, and uh, uh, spherical trigonometry, which is how we create maps. And those two sciences melded together allow us to create an orientation of where we are in the universe. And without those, we don't have an understanding of north, and we also don't know how to build a calendar. That's what an ephemeris does. It synthesizes those two sciences. That's not the byproduct of random anything, nor is it chaotic. And yet, people like Stephen Hawking, Harry Christopher, glibly want us to believe and follow suit in their pseudoscientific language that these are the byproducts of chaos. What a lie! Number four, all set around a centrally fixed pivot, the post or fulcrum, a north star, the center of a galaxy, etc. Number five, now these are, these are relationships that, that I want to draw about a roulette wheel and the universe we inhabit. Are you with me? I've run over my time, but are you with me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, I'll end here. The force that starts the spinning. This is an unseen mover, the most complex element in the equation. As I said, if you want to get a dynamo going, look at the way they produce energy in this country. They use a dynamo. What's a dynamo? Inside a dynamo is a complex com composition of magnets and coils, usually copper or zinc or cadmium that all relate to each other in terms of electromagnetic charges, and they output amperage and voltage. And in order to do that, you have to put in something. So, what is that? Again, Plato called it movement. But no, it's not movement. Movement is a byproduct of something else. Intention. You don't have movement.